Bruce Dumont back in hour number two of Beyond the Bellway this evening, wherever you're listening from coast to coast. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast and the Zoom cast. I guess that's the new uh, word to be used, a Zoom cast. And uh, in this hour, we're going to be talking about the, the problems of the restaurant business. And again, if uh, you've heard uh, briefly this story, uh, stay with us because there's a lot of intricacy uh, that I think uh, you should know. And and, and uh, the ripple effect of this is pretty significant. Uh, joining us in this hour, we have Phil Vitell. Phil Vitell is the longtime restaurant critic of the Chicago Tribune. Phil, nice to have you with us this evening. And Thank also, you. we're going to be joined by Ray Lopez. Ray Lopez is the alderman, Democratic Committeeman of the 15th Ward in Chicago. He's a frequent guest on this program. And uh, many of the constituents of his ward are those workers, not necessarily the owners of restaurants, but those who work in the kitchen, in the in the busing service. Uh, many of them reside in, in Ray's ward, as well as, obviously, a lot of restaurant tours as well. But uh, that's part of the ripple effect when you're talking about the problem of uh, the restaurant business. A little bit later on, we're going to be joined by a gentleman from California, and uh, he feels that uh, uh, the, the dictates of Governor Gavin Newsom are too much, and he is rejecting and, and failing to respond and uh, adhere to the rules of the state of California, which is indoor dining should be shut down. That's also the case uh, in the Chicago area. It's also the case effective tomorrow morning in New York City, shutting down all indoor dining. Um, so I want to begin with you, um, based on all the people that you deal with on a, on a regular basis, uh, Phil, uh, how devastating is this and, and, and what, what forms of devastation have you been seeing over the last several months uh, since we did this first interview uh, many months ago? Well, it's, it's, it's an ongoing tragedy. Uh, restaurants are closing left and right. People are being uh, furloughed left and right. Restaurants have very little confidence that they can withstand the winter. Um, in, in the restaurant cycle, January, February, March are the worst we, uh, months for the restaurant industry mm -hmm. because there aren't very many customers. Right. Usually they build up to this with holiday parties and a big summer and all that was taken away from them. So they are, they have, they have very little in reserve because that's just the way the cycle works. And someone described it as they, with the, with the vaccines coming out now, they know where the oasis is and they don't think they have enough water mm -hmm. to get there. Now, these restaurant tours, they are dealing with uh, recommendations from the CDC, so they're dealing at the federal level. But each individual state also has their own independent uh, uh, determinations, and, and some governors and some mayors are more strict than others. So um, if they're looking for someone to, to blame, are, are they blaming everybody, or are they blaming uh, the federal response uh, less likely or more likely than their local uh, municipal and state dictates what i'm hearing mostly from restaurateurs is the frustration of what they perceive to be an an unfair application of the rules mm -hmm. they uh one chef recently toured the uh food court at a mall and took uh, pictures of all the people unmasked sitting close together mm -hmm. and he can't open his dining room and another story that broke uh, uh, late, uh, late this week was the revelation that some people knew and some people didn't mm -hmm. that restaurants and bars inside O'Hare and Midway Airport are allowed to be open. Mm -hmm. And you have all these people congregating. Mm -hmm. There's no mechanism at the state level for determining which restaurants can be considered safe mm -hmm. and which cannot. Many restaurants have spent thousands of dollars investing in air filtration mm -hmm. systems and special dividers to keep people separate and, 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 right. and, and, and equipment of all kinds. Mm -hmm. And they've been told none of that matters, but you can go to Costco with 144 more people at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Right. And we that also, disparity, that unfairness is really what gets to them. We should also mention in Chicago, uh, a, a member of the Chicago city council who owns a very popular restaurant, uh, he was singled out this past week uh, because he was letting some regular customers into his indoor dining establishment, and uh, he was uh, 
he was caught and fined, and Mayor Lightfoot became very uh, furious with him, and yet uh, the two of them are usually politically uh, simpatico and sympathetic with each other. Uh, one alderman who is not uh, sympathetic with the mayor of Chicago is Ray Lopez, who joins us now. And, and Ray, my question to you is, uh, at the beginning of the discussion, I, I mentioned the difference between those that own restaurants and those that have to work in restaurants, and obviously they are part of the ripple effect that is affected by any dictate that a governor, a, a senator of the CDC, not senator, but a governor or mayor of the CDC uh, comes up with. So to tell us a little bit more about the devastation in your ward as it relates to uh, many Hispanic workers that uh, that are listening to our broadcast from coast to coast tonight. No, I, good evening, Bruce, to, to you, Phil, and to all of your viewers. Um, once again, you know, we're seeing this, uh, this incongruent logic coming down from all levels of government, impacting communities throughout this entire country, uh, hitting hardest those essential workers that show up to work in restaurants, show up to be busboys in hotels and things of that nature, who don't know which end is up at this point, 10 months into this pandemic. And we have seen the impact it's had on our communities with double digit positivity rates, the fear and the creation of now the underground markets where since they don't have restaurants to go dine in, they're actually now having like bootleg version of restaurants on the streets and uh, open air markets where they're selling tacos, food and whatnot mm -hmm. without a license, without sanitation, because there's nowhere else to go and they need mm -hmm. to make some money. And all of that is fighting against the perceived effort to try and get a hold of uh, the coronavirus. You know, it's very dangerous. And it, there, if we don't all get on the same page, there will be no end in sight soon to, so that we can start opening up and getting our lives back to normal. But again, as, as far as who they're most upset with, uh, and again, in Chicago, you know, they, they have a mayor who acts precipitously. Uh, we have a governor who some would say drags his feet and then, then acts precipitously. And we certainly have those who criticize the PPP program at the federal level. So the, the, the people who are at the low rung of the restaurant industry that you're talking about, I mean, who, who are they pissed off with? So, you, you know, I, I'll be perfectly frank. You know, my residents, people are upset with every level of government. Right. They simply think that none of us are on the same page and they are 100 percent correct. You said it today. You said it perfectly. You've got a, a, a mayor in Chicago who does, does one thing, a governor who says something else. And oftentimes they are in a match pulling on each other while simultaneously trying to throw uh, their anger and frustration at the federal level. And that is a story that has repeated itself from coast to coast throughout this country. All the while, people's lives are in jeopardy. People's businesses are in jeopardy. I think, Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, we have almost 21,000 restaurants that are expected to close because of COVID-19 across this country. 5,000 alone in the city of Chicago possibly may never open again, if, I'm, if I saw my numbers right. You know, these are people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into becoming entrepreneurs, becoming business owners who are hoping to fight the American dream. And because of the lack of coordination by politicians too complacent with their own guaranteed Everybody's, paychecks to realize what, that what, we need to make consistent decisions. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got to stop here. We're going to continue uh, with our guests and also we're going to be joined by a guest from Agora Hills, California, and he's decided to fight back. We'll hear from him in a moment. For some, news is about their opinions. We believe the news should give you the facts without bias, so you can form your own. We believe in news, not talk. Facts, not opinions. News Nation is on every night at 7 p.m. on WGN America to give you the information you need. Everyone calls it the news, but we'll actually deliver on it. Seven nights a week in primetime. Find your local channel by going to WGNAmerica.com. News Nation. It's your news, your nation. The tween made you see. We are the boy. It's painful concert number three. We are the boy band. We're five and nineteen. We are the boy band. Always singing on key. You love your kids enough to take them to see their favorite uh, band. Love them enough to make sure they're buckled up in the back seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.
Bruce Dumont back. Thanks very much for joining us tonight on Beyond the Beltway. And uh, we're going to bring into our conversation to uh, continue conversation with uh, Ray Lopez and Phil Vitell here in Chicago. We're going to bring in Dave Foles, who joins us from Agoura Hills, California. Dave, can you hear us okay out in California? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear, man. Terrific. You are the owner of Cronies, which uh, has several locations in Southern California. And uh, you, like everyone else in that business, is trying to stay afloat. And by the way, uh, just in this past year, over 110,000 restaurants have gone out of business. That represents about 17% of the restaurants in the United States. And you said, by golly, I'm not going to I'm not I'm not going to be in the next statistic that comes out. So tell us um, tell us what you have been doing and tell us uh, how difficult the decisions by Governor Newsom have been on you and uh, that you chose to fight back against the governor. Give us that story. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. And, and here's what's going on here in Southern California. About, uh, I don't know, 16 days ago or 14 days ago, no, 16 days ago, L.A. County uh, set up a new rule where it didn't let any restaurants have outdoor dining. I'm not talking about indoor dining. I'm talking about outdoor dining. Uh, in the fresh open air and and uh, in other counties which were adjacent to us which uh, my other restaurants are in that county were allowed to continue their outdoor dining and and so I thought it was very unfair and um, I said no we are not my partners and I discussed this and uh, we said no we're not going to close down we're going to continue doing outdoor business we're going to follow the same standards that the CDC has recommended and the county has recommended for health in regards to distancing and, and all those other things and we stayed open and and a judge actually last week overturned that and he said you know that uh, the county of Los Angeles overstepped its reach and uh, there is there's there was nothing uh, there was no merit to their to their uh, decision to close down restaurants there is no the and the judge gave uh, the county they said show me some evidence that outdoor dining is a threat to uh, to to receive COVID and they couldn't come up with it so he turned mm -hmm. it over but by that time Governor Newsom did this across the whole state he made five regions and and I am in the Southern California region, and all of my stores now are supposed to be uh, takeout or delivery only, and that just doesn't work for us. And, but but uh, no in but none no. but no indoor. I want to just clarify indoor. Mm -hmm. You can't do indoor either. You could not do indoor here uh, for the past uh, probably five months. We haven't done indoor. Okay. The only thing was outdoor, and the governor ranted and raved and said, "Everybody, go outside!" And and, and right. all cities were giving special use permits, temporary permits for outdoor dining, even in parking spaces. And we've invested in our stores so much money on on canopies, rental heaters, the propane, the K rails, uh, the fencing, uh, tables. We have how much do the, that we how much, how, tens Dave, of how, how much of dollars. how much do those things cost? I mean, the let's just talk about the the flame warmers. How much does that cost? And do you have to buy them or do you rent them? At first, we were renting them, but then we decided to buy them. And if you could find one, you're very lucky because how much are they're they? very high in demand. So you're paying about two hundred bucks, one hundred seventy-five to two hundred dollars. What them. about the tents? Sometimes you could find them on sale. What about the tents? The tents. One of our stores was paying, I think, seventy-five to eight thousand dollars a month for this rental, and we have five stores. The one that we uh, in Agora Hills, uh, the landlord actually uh, picked up that bill, and and they were renting out canopies for us. But um, I'm talking about these canopies you would see at a at a wedding. I mean, some of the mm -hmm. one of our restaurants right. has a canopy that is forty by uh, eighty. Right. It, it was huge. And um, you rent them, but that's the only way you can operate your business. It's crazy. You're paying for this giant canopy, but you're not using your inside of your restaurant. I want to come back to I want to come back to uh, Phil Vitello, the Chicago Tribune, who joins us here. Phil, uh, how common is that story with the restaurant tours that you speak about? Are they also uh, complaining about the cost of investing all these uh, items? Uh, you know, for outdoor dining, when uh, you know we're, we're soon going to be in the twenty degree range here in Chicago. Uh, right. Uh, I talked to, I spoke to a couple of restaurateurs and they were talking about renting tents sufficient to cover their outdoor patios in the back 
a three month rental, $20,000. And um, they can barely make that, that, that that's, they would need to fill it as much as they can and, 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 and would barely break even. Uh, in the city of Chicago, you can't really, I mean, they do it, but you're not, it's not really uh, a, to code to use propane heaters. It's supposed to be all electric. Now, uh, also, also the restaurants from the city center, the more you're going to get away with it because the inspectors have bigger fish to fry. But if you're in the, if you're in the city center, if you're in the loop, if you're in River North and you put up a tent and you put propane in there, the inspectors are going to get there pretty quick and they're going to make you stop that. You can do forced air, you can do electric. And, but here in Chicago, it's, it, it's December 11th. 13th, right. excuse me, right. this point is about to become moot. Right. There, and, there, there's not enough and is, going to get you to sit, sit outside and, in, in you know sub-20 degree weather. Yeah, and is there, uh, uh, on the issue of, of not only the, the inspectors showing up, um, what, is, what is the current rule about indoor? Indoor dining is verboten at the moment, correct? In, in Chicago, but, but not in the state. Throughout the state of Illinois. Throughout the state of Illinois. So, and, but, and, but again, but once upon, a, once, once, once upon California a time, also. though, once upon a time, uh, they were trying to ask a restaurateur uh, to survive on, what, 20%, 25% of their their audience? Yes. Right. Bill, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dave, is that the same thing in California? You, you're, you're dealing with re reducing percentages of trying to operate? Well, for a few weeks, well, first of all, when this whole thing started, we were closed for... Um, we were closed for um, how long was it? About two. Dave, and a half that months. might have been an order. That might have been an order. Right, and everybody <laughs> accepted that. We didn't know about the virus, and then they let us back in with uh, like half uh, occupancy, and then they kicked us outside again. And actually, in California, the weather's a little nicer. It's actually very uh, doable, and the heaters from where we are in the cities we are, we just we have the canopies, canopies, but yeah. we can't put walls on them. Right. So. Right. Getting back to your point about you can't use propane, you're absolutely correct. There has to be uh, open walls, at least two of okay. the walls open. I want to um, go back. I want to go back to Ray Lopez. Ray is a, is an alderman in the city of Chicago. He's not closely tied with the mayor. But my question to you, Ray, is someone who I'm sure gets the complaints from the restaurant tours in your neighborhood, and maybe you pick them up elsewhere. Um, who is making the decision? For the city of Chicago, who comes up with an idea that we think a restaurateur can operate on 20 percent when they, when they may have no clue at all uh, as to that that 20 percent may be totally uh, irresponsible request? So, you know, in the city of Chicago, Bruce, we've seen where the departments are being made, the decisions are being made behind closed doors between the mayor and the public health department. We've seen that at the state level where the legislature is not involved and making some of these decisions. And I think indeed we're seeing that throughout many of the states throughout this country where it's all by executive order. And they usually change every 30 days because that's about how long you can have an executive order be legal. And that's where I think a lot of this gray area is because these orders, we've never had a public discussion on how to get from point A to point B. We understand that in the first two months we were all scrambling to figure out what happened. But to be quite honest, politicians piddled away their opportunity all summer to figure out what the wintertime plan was going to be. We know winter is the hardest time for restaurants. As Phil said, as, as Dave knows, you know, starting off after Christmas, you expect your holiday season to carry you over into the first three months where you actually have some cash fluidity, or you, well, excuse me, where you don't have that cash fluidity. Mm -hmm. But if you take away that reserve, now you're asking people to make it on their own without any kind of cushion. Right. And now you're telling people, again, no indoors, no, no outdoors in some states. Right. Uh, in Chicago, you can only. do it outdoors, but you've got to have your, your tents and your canopies walled off because it's going to be right. two degrees out, which to the argument of many of our restaurants, why are we even outside in a four square box when we could just go inside to the four square box? Exactly. And, Let me, you know, the, I wanna, I wanna what many of our cities aren't doing is that we're not yeah. retooling our grants and funds to actually help our businesses figure out how to survive and work through COVID as opposed to just continuing the victimization is of it, the pandemic. Isn't there, isn't there in Chicago, and again, uh, Phil, you may know this, or Ray may know this, that there's almost $250 million left in the federal pot 
uh, for whether it's PPE or keeping you know restaurants uh, going. Phil, have you heard that figure that there's money that just hasn't been uh, disseminated so, as yet? So three hundred. What, what's the what's the number? It's over three hundred million. Three hundred million. And that's that's fe- those are federal dollars, correct? It's part of the CARES Act money, yes. Okay. Well, the question is, why <laughs> hasn't that money been spent? Ray, I'm going to come back to you because you're you're. You, you, well, I, I can I can tell you flat out that the CARES Act that we got under uh, the Trump administration for the city of Chicago was almost uh, 980 million dollars. Wow. Just shy of a billion. Um, and that money was supposed to use for PPE to help to help us avoid the economic. Cat, cat, Who's watching cat, over that, right? events. Who's watching over it? What it be used towards is like homeless prevention, violence reduction, and all kinds of other things. And very little effort has been put by many administrations throughout this uh, country to try and help local businesses survive. My personal view is take some of that CARES Act money, and if you want restaurants to be closed, pay them to be closed through the CARES Act so that they don't have to worry about their bills, they don't have to worry about their employees, Set it aside for those industries that we want closed. I want to. We want to operate. I want. I want to come back. I want to get reaction uh, from uh, Phil uh, as to how widespread that is, and and what the restaurant tours are doing with uh, uh, three hundred million dollars sitting in a pot waiting to be divvied up. And also, I want to get reaction uh, from Dave Foles out in California as well. Everybody's trying to survive in this thing. Nobody seems to know exactly what's going on and when we come back we're going to talk about how restaurateurs are trying to fight back including we'll hear more about Dave Foles he's trying to uh, keep Governor Newsom away from his doors back shortly Bruce Dumont back on Beyond the Beltway thanks very much for joining us we're going to let our guests take a moment to introduce themselves to you more fully and let's start with Phil Vitell of the Chicago Tribune. Phil? Hi there. Phil Vitell. I'm the Chicago Tribune's restaurant critic. I've been so for uh, 30 years. And uh, once upon a time, uh, no one knew what you looked like when you walked into a restaurant, but you changed that a Correct. few years back. What caused the uh, change and uh, uh, any reaction from restaurants when you did that? Uh, two years ago, I removed my 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 <laughs> so-called mask and decided all right yeah. let people see my face the reasoning was after all these years a lot of restaurants particularly the ones that are especially dialed in ones that have good pr companies working for them mm-hmm. had more or less figured out what i was like and what i looked like and they could spot me and there were some restaurants that could never do that and i realized i had inadvertently contributed to an unfair system where there were some okay. restaurants that could not make a mistake of giving me bad service because it was me and sure. restaurants who could make that mistake. And I said, well, I thought the only way to level the playing field was to let people know what I look like now. If, now, if it doesn't work out, well, I can feel like I can, t- I can tell you that if I were to call over to central casting and ask them <laughs> to send me a restaurant critic, I think I'd send someone who looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to certainly well fed. Is that yeah. right? Well, that's a, well, I guess that's one of the occupational hazards. Let's go to Raymond Lopez. Ray, explain everybody to you, uh, Alderman, who you are. Good evening, Bruce, to you and all your viewers. Once again, I'm Raymond Lopez. I'm a member of the Chicago City Council. I represent uh, communities on the southwest side of the city, predominantly African American, Latino, uh, home to many of the essential workers impacted by COVID, as well as a lot of people who are entrepreneurs and small business owners in their own right locally. And and COVID is one of the you, you were one of the major wards in Chicago hit by COVID as well. In addition to the restaurant issues we're talking about this evening. Yeah, we uh, we have posit- double digit positivity rates in almost every one of the communities. We've been fighting with the administration to ensure that we could get testing uh, and get access to health care for the individuals who need it most in our city. Do you believe the administration in Chicago is deliberately doing anything bad to the people in your ward because you are their leader? I don't think it's because I don't think it's because of me, despite some of my colorful epitaphs with the mayor that yeah. have become national news. You're famous. Uh, I think it's her own blissful ignorance to the world out to, outside of her cocoon that she doesn't realize that there are working people who still have to go out day in and day out that are impacted by the vi- by the virus. OK, uh, Dave Foles, let's go to you for a brief introduction. Hey, Bruce. Uh, thanks for having me again today. 
Uh, my name is Dave Folds. I'm co-owner of uh, five restaurants in Southern California, L.A. and Ventura County. Um, it's family restaurants with a sports theme. We show all the games and serve burger sandwiches. And, and each restaurant employs about, we have five of them, about 30, 35 people. So so we have a lot of people we employ. And uh, we had an order recently to, to lock down outdoor dining in restaurants, limiting us to takeout and pickup only and delivery. Um and uh, I'm in defiance in one of my stores, and I'm uh, getting an incredible amount of support and some, some haters out there, but that's okay. But I'm standing up for something which I believe in, and I'm standing up for my employees. And, uh, and, it, and it's, it's been rough, but it's, uh, I'm, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm, and uh, and uh, it's, it's just a good thing I'm doing, and I wish other people would join us because, because my staff is counting on me. My staff needs these jobs and uh and uh and and if i don't stay open the restaurant's going to fail and and i'm not going to be a statistic i'm just keep going to keep pushing how large is your staff dave pardon me how large is your staff uh like a, we have about I, i'd say about 150 people working for us mm -hmm. in the five restaurants and uh and the, of course, they range from guys in the kitchen to the servers, all of our managers, general managers. Uh, we have, uh, you know, just all different positions, uh, and we're and we're trying to grow and develop. So we have bar managers, and and these are people. And by the way, people in the restaurant industry, first of all, the servers, many of them are single mothers, and and they need this income more than anybody. Believe me, we have to take care of these single mm -hmm. mothers, and I have a lot of single mothers working for us. And the guys in the kitchen, they, they, they need to, to, to pay the rent, and it's, it's just, it's, we're the last people you want to hurt, and we're so important, and, 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 and I'm just so surprised and I'm shocked in our government, in our state government, that they would allow us and discriminate against us and think that we're not important, especially... And I'm talking about outdoor dining. That's all we're asking for. They took that away from us. You can go to the Home Depot, and you could mess around with a leaf blower and purchase one of those. Right. You can go to the furniture store. You can go to the jewelry store. But you can't go outdoor dining in, in a restaurant in Southern California right now. And it's just ridiculous. What is, uh, what is the governor or the uh, law enforcement agencies within your jurisdictions, what have they done to uh, – to wrap your knuckles. I mean, they, they clearly don't like what you're doing. They probably don't like that you're doing this interview and sharing your story around the country, as you've done most of the week uh, on Fox News. Uh, are they coming down on you in any way? Well, first of all, the police departments made it very clear, the sheriffs, that they're not going to get involved with this at all. They are not going to be enforcing any people staying past the curfew, which we have here is 10 o'clock, or or, or arresting restaurateurs or anything like that or helping uh, in that process, which is great. And I have to also tell you, the health department, these are good people. And most of the people who come up to me who, who want to cite me say, uh, listen, I understand where you're coming from, but I have a job to do. So mm -hmm. you actually build a relationship because they come in every day, the health department from Los Angeles, and they find me $500 a day, every day at different times. So one of my partners and I usually have to be there and and everything else is great the the, uh, the the distance within tables the cleanliness of the restaurant all those other things that are so important masks and things like that but uh i'm not supposed to be open i asked the uh one of the inspector today i said how many other people are, are doing this in los angeles and he said i'm the lone ranger and i just can't mm. believe that and i know right. for a fact there's other people doing it but they're just under the radar right and um uh, and and it's uh but it says, I'm actually really proud to make this stand right now. I was so scared at first, and I'm still scared. I don't want to lose my restaurant. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you know, other people and other Americans have done such other more dangerous things that they fought for or their liberty when they've been in foxholes with bullets flying over their head. That is real stress. That is real worry. I'm standing up for something that is worth losing. So, uh I, I'm just proud to be doing this, and so are Phil, my partners. Phil Vitell, uh in in Illinois, uh, many or several restaurateurs downstate 
outside Chicago, they pop up on the news of, of defying uh, the, 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 go- the goals and the dictates of Governor Pritzker, our Democratic governor. But uh, do, you hear, do you hear other stories or, or pockets where people are going to stand up? And is there any well-known restaurateur in Chicago that would uh, follow a Dave Fold's lead and, and just say, I'm going to fight back against this? There are um, quite a few restaurants that are seating people indoors in defiance of the rules. There are very few restaurants, and to my knowledge, none in Chicago that are taking a stand and going public with that position. What they're doing, as Dave suggested with some of uh, the restaurants in his area, they're just kind of keeping it on the down low and letting people in, hoping they don't get caught. Uh, We had... uh, it, it, it hit the uh, it hit the uh, headlines and the uh, TV news a week or so ago when a hotel in the northern suburbs right. was caught hosting a uh, allowing a uh, a wedding, right. and the wedding was more than a hundred people, and there was video showing no masks and close together and all that, and this what happened is they got they got a stern talking to they they weren't even fined. And um, not that I want to see them fined, but it also lets everybody else know the first time you get caught, you're probably going to be, you'll probably be okay. Right. And then it it might get worse. Right. Is there any uh, move afoot in the city council, uh, uh, Alderman uh, Lopez, about uh, cracking down on restaurants? Or are your colleagues uh, who are members of the city council uh, more politically aware that, that uh, standing on the side of the restaurant tours may be the popular position at the moment. Well, all of us want people to be safe, but we don't want we don't want to destroy our economy in the process. So we've been talking about what we can do to ensure that licensing goes on without penalty, that restaurants and businesses are allowed to stay open despite uh, their licensing expiring, so that once we're able to reopen again, that they won't have to go through more hurdles to get to that point. Um, My dogs agree. Um, But what I think um, is most important is that we want people to be safe, but we want to try and create some consistency for businesses to follow so that we don't have to have this underground market or this rebellion just to survive. With all all these uh, issues uh, within the restaurant industry, how much revenue is the city of Chicago or state of Illinois losing because of the crackdown and the closure of some of these restaurants? Chicago's budget has been impacted about a 20% loss. A 20% loss. Are people saying to you, Phil, that uh, uh, they may be able to uh, take this for maybe a couple more months, but they're ready to throw in the towel? I need a 15-second answer here, Phil. Yes, I think a lot. Of, I think when, uh, when July 1st rolls around, we're going to see an astonishing number of restaurants saying, we tried our best. Uh, the, I mean, the hope is that the there's uh, that the new administration might be able to push through a a a restaurants act that has passed the house but is Mm. stagnant in the senate and that glimmer of hope is is causing people trying to hang on uh i know the uh some congressmen are trying to get some little bit down payment relief bill going before the end of the year that might keep let get people i want to I want to follow up a little bit longer. I want to follow up with that when we come back. It's a one hundred and twenty billion dollar uh, effort. We'll continue with our guests. I'm Bruce Dumont. Thanks for joining us tonight. Dumont back. Thanks very much for joining us this evening, and uh, we're going to go back uh, to uh, uh, Phil Vitell. Phil, I want to get find a little bit more about you, about the the organization. You uh, the organization that represents restaurateurs. Obviously, like any association, they've got to be politically astute. But are are restaurateurs perhaps upset that the association maybe is not playing 
hardball like they should? Uh, if you're talking about the Illinois Restaurant yes. Association, yeah. if if they don't think the Illinois Restaurant Association is fighting hard enough, I'm I I, I would have to think they're not paying close enough attention. Okay, I think, good to know. Uh, I think the Illinois Restaurant Association has been fighting tooth and nail. The the I think that on the national level, National Restaurant Association has been has been a loud advocate. They may not have the results mm-hmm. they want yet, but they're they're doing their best. I think the complicating thing is. Unlike the airline industry, which has already gotten set aside uh, on, on a number mm-hmm. of occasions, unlike the banking industry, the Illinois, the, the restaurant industry is a series of small businesses and no one large business. And, and as a result, I think they, they don't have as large a voice in Congress. They don't have as large a voice even in local government. And they don't get the same cut of the pie when, when, when aid is being distributed. I'm surprised by that because obviously uh, – Politicians are probably go to power lunches or dinners all the time, and I would think that just in, in being around and being you know elected politicians for a while, they have a lot of friends in the uh, in the restaurant business more so than dry cleaners or automobile repairs. So I, I'm surprised that 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 uh, that pressure has not worked on them yet. Although you mentioned earlier in the broadcast that there is a bill that's passed the House, it's in the Senate now, it's a $120 billion, it's called the the, the Restaurant Act, I guess that's pretty simple, and uh, uh, can you give me, give everyone a little more information about that? As you say, it's it may likely to pass, it's got 40 sponsors, so uh, this would seem to be something that is going to pass unless it's uh, trapped in the politics of the house that they don't want to give anybody any money until uh, you know the big covid relief package has been passed your reaction well yeah it's 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 it has not come up for a vote at all it hasn't made it to the senate floor so um there's there there are a number of people that did not want to be perhaps seen as voting against restaurants just prior to the election mm-hmm. so the bill was just kind of bottled up because nobody you know, defeated or, or, or pass it. Some right. people just sit down and want their votes on the record. Uh, the, the, the Restaurants Act, is, as the name suggests, is more specifically geared toward restaurants. We had the PPP, uh, payroll, uh, pay, Paycheck Protection uh, Program, did not work very well for restaurants for a number of reasons when they were, because it was, it was, it was, num- it was money you could spend on your employees, but you, to, to keep it from becoming a loan, you had to pay back, you had to bring employees back full time in, in, in order to turn and make that loan convertible into a grant. And in Chicago, that was impossible because the restaurants weren't allowed to be open. Right. So you bring them back and, many and you were closed, right. so you can do it for a while. Then you have to let them go again. And now the bill comes due. Now the PPP has just been a loan. Mm-hmm. And, and Phil, if I may jump in, there was also another problem too, because it was also based on your, ta- on your payroll taxes. And many of our waiters and servers know that and bartenders know in a restaurant, part of your income is also based on gratuity, on tips, which you may or may not necessarily have claimed income tax on or paid taxes on so that it wasn't reflective of the true amount needed for those employees either. Is, is This is a side issue, but uh, I'm wondering, and I'm going to go back to you, Dave, for this. Uh, since we've heard that, uh, you know, not only the waiters, but the people uh, who work uh, in the kitchen, uh, many of them know, and the public generally knows, they're not uh, they're not well paid, or they're not they're not paid a minimum wage in many many areas. Uh, the public may be uh, wanting those restaurant workers to be paid more, and I'm wondering if that, uh, from a political standpoint, whether that creates a problem uh, for you personally in running your your businesses, uh, that some of the employees may be underpaid, and uh, maybe there's a political constituency out there that wants to see them to get a bigger piece of any bailout by, I hate to use the term bailout, but at least government support that you might get. How do you react to that? Well, we're a unique place. I mean, first of all, in California, the minimum wage is going to be $14 in January an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and and everything is relative. You can't get a good uh, a good kitchen person unless you pay them more than that, unless it's an entry-level bus person. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're, we're paying our, 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 our staff, you know, in the area of 18 to $20 an hour for a good, for a good cook. Cause if mm-hmm. they're good, they could do twice as much as somebody else. Right. On top of that, they do get a uh, indirectly tip from the, uh, 
from the servers also. We have a really good team. We split our tips and, and they get a percentage of it. So in our mm-hmm. situation, it works really well. And our, and, our, and our kitchen staff seems to be really happy. And they've stayed with us for many, many years. So, and that's a reflection of that. But, um, but, but back to the, what the PPP was, and I'm glad you mentioned that. When we were closed initially, we knew that we were going to get some kind of help. If you're going to shut us down, give us help. It's same with eminent domain. If you're going to put a, a freeway through my backyard, pay me. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I understand that. But but right now there is no help in sight. And you're right. The PPP did not work well for restaurants. You can't. Why would you bring your people back? You're going to have five servers to answer the phone for to-go orders. Right. It, it just didn't work out that well. But there's nothing that is, they're not telling us that they're going to help us out. So we have to survive and take care of ourselves. But, uh, but you're absolutely right. Oftentimes in restaurants uh, in different parts of the country, maybe the, the kitchen staff is, is, is how, paid. Dave, how high or, or how much improvement has there been in your takeout orders? Given all that's going on with you, obviously you're forced to do more takeout. I'm sure you probably did some takeout prior to it. Uh, has there been a big bump to that? slice of your business well well let me tell you um with the takeout some of the people who are haters say oh just just do more takeout people don't understand first of all we serve sandwiches and burgers and you know uh sports bar food and and our and our takeout was always probably we have really good food and breakfast and everything also but our takeout was probably normal times three percent i got 10 i got 10 seconds left Okay, then it went, now we're at about 20%. You throw in the fees that Uber Eats and DoorDash charges yeah. you, you're not making much money, Okay, and, and it just doesn't Good work. Good point. Place. Dave Fulce, thank you for taking us inside the restaurant business in California. Keep up the good fight out there. Phil Vitell, always good to have you with us. And Ray Lopez, likewise to you. See you next week on Beyond the Beltway.